welcome back to the channel welcome back to the stratify shop so right here is our development car our mark 7 r development car and this car we've had uh, we've had for a while you can see videos if you look back through our channel history that we've done on it before and um, so we have a little summary we have an intake on the car we have a upgraded intercooler on the car and the upgraded intercooler is of course in part of the it's a drop-in so it's a part of the cooling stack here we have a full turbo bath exhaust we have mpi already installed uh, right here and we have an upgraded in tank pump so the only thing that we haven't really upgraded on the car has been the turbocharger and i i've been debating you know what kind of turbocharger suits this this car best and this of course will depend on what you use it for but one of the things that i really like about the oem is 38 is just it it sits in that sweet spot of uh, spool time is 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 good it's relatively low and at the same time you get decent top end out of it however um, of course there's there's always the quest for better there's always the quest for more and Garrett has recently released their stage one and stage two power max turbos for these cars and they work on the GTI they work on the car and uh, we have them on our website with tunes but I wanted to take an even closer look and show you guys uh, more of, of what this turbo entails and the build around it. This is not meant to be a how to remove and install your new turbo, not in, not in detail. There's plenty of videos out there for that. But just wanted to point out a couple of gotchas on the, specifically on the R, because it's got a few more things in the way. So one of the things you want to do is you want to use uh, something like this uh, radiator hose to, to drain some of your coolant before you undo the coolant lines from the turbo because you're just going to get uh, more coolant on your face uh, if you're underneath the car and haven't done that. The other thing is that, so it's, it's quite difficult to get to some of the lines on the turbo, the turbo oil drain and the uh, water line and behind the block. And some of the things that you'll need to do, we need to remove our downpipe here so you can see that the downpipe is out of the way and also that required to remove the drive shaft so the drive shaft uh you'll just if you can look in here it is just it's unbolted you've got uh your bolts just on this side that that you need to remove and then you can just uh press it out a little bit uh and then and then move out of the way uh off of its pilot bearing over there and that will give you enough clearance to pull the down pipe uh and uh and then it'll give you enough clearance to reach some of the tight spots in here. This is because the power takeoff unit is right, right in the way. It's easier on a GTI. Oh, interim view of where we're at. So we drained some coolant uh, from the car because you're going to have to pull this line off, which which runs right across the turbo there. Uh, also, the the two coolant lines uh, from from the turbo itself uh, can make a mess. So drain a little bit of coolant. You don't have to drain all of it unless you're due for a coolant flush, uh, but just enough so that you get. The coolant from the top of the motor uh, to a lower level and also uh, obviously we pulled the coil packs uh, here and here's the harness for them and then the harness for the uh, uh, for the exhaust cam actuator and uh, the intake is all off we're going to take a much closer look at the turbo once we get it off the car and the charge piping and the the downpipe obviously uh, has to come off so we're getting close to pulling this thing out shouldn't be too much longer here's the turbo itself that's been pulled out of the car so uh, one of the problematic lines that i mentioned is is this line and it is uh, the the oil return we pulled it right from the block make sure when you reinstall this you replace all these o-rings you definitely don't want these to leak and the way to get it out is that it's kind of stuck in there inside the block so what we had to do is we had to obviously unbolt it and then you can use a very fine screwdriver to start prying it away uh, in between this flange here and the block and this was the case when we pull the water lines uh, off as well so the water line that's that's in the back which is which is this guy was uh was also a pain because it's really hard to reach up against the firewall and use a similar method to this there, there are all these o-ringed uh, lines make sure you replace all the o-rings stage one garrett turbo is in and everything's buttoned up here so uh, the well, it, it looks very much like stock. Uh, you can see in here that 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 elbow that comes with the Garrett is is on there. Uh, you have to be a little bit creative with how you snake uh, the PCV line uh, 
uh, underneath here and and not not trap your your bypass valve but really everything is is pretty much like stock fitment because the turbo is not significantly different from stock um so the the water lines and, and oil lines remain the the biggest kind of pain in the butt to uh, to put together and they do have these these standoffs these blocks uh, underneath that um that help offset because the chra on the garrett turbo is smaller uh, than the oem chra but otherwise everything has uh, has come together from the top from underneath, everything once again looks very, very stock-like. You know, you've got a whole bunch of lines. It's being on R. It's got the drive shaft in there. So, like I've overviewed when removing the turbo, there's there's a lot of stuff to to get out of the way. You will have to move this drive shaft out of the way, kind of like a downpipe job, and then realign your exhaust depending on on what you've got. Uh, with the CTS exhaust here, we had to be careful, uh, you know, of clearance in here and and in the back on the back subframe. But other than that, uh, you're, you're looking at something that fits back just like the OEM turbo. And if it doesn't, uh, then, then something has gone wrong. So, all right. Now let's get this thing uh, all buttoned up, test driven, and let's put up on the dyno. So far is uh, all buttoned up with the uh, Garrett Stage 1 turbo. So it's hard to tell in there, but uh, there it is. And uh, we also have the turbo speed gauge. Uh, all set up. It is uh, put in here uh, temporarily because what we're going to do is we're going to map it to the stock ECU turbo speed mapping so we don't have to run this gauge all the time. So for the dyno tuning, we're going to run it and make sure it maps out correctly. And uh, let's see what this thing can do. So let's uh, let's do a poll here. Now the car is dialed in uh, with the Pmax turbo and then we'll discuss the results. So you'll see how long a fourth gear pull takes on the on the street So now the meat and potatoes of this turbo. So here's the power pole and fourth gear on our Mustang Dyno. And uh, you can see here that uh, it made 369 uh, horsepower to the wheels and about 366 foot-pounds of torque. And uh, that's, that's a really nice power curve. Notice how the torque stays really nice and flat, just, uh, you know, even past 5,000 RPM. And, and then the peak horsepower is, is um, close to the stock red line. So this turbo creates a really, really nice power curve. And uh, let's look a little bit more in detail on the interactive curve um, of, from the dyno. So first of all, we get some really nice and early spool on dialed in. 2800 rpm in fourth gear and this is a loaded dyno since it's a mustang so you can expect about the same on the street uh in fourth gear so under 3000 rpm for peak torque uh which is very nice and uh, as we've seen there the the torque carries on and it's, and it's flat it's flat just past uh 5000 rpm 5200 rpm and then it starts to drop off a little bit now the dyno that that we use here is uh, does read a little bit low so if you're to compare this to a dyno jet uh, let's say uh, we read predominantly about 14 percent below what a dyno jet reads so expect this car to to make about 420 or so to the wheels on a dyno jet now it's on pump gas and it is a a, a cold uh, winter day so that's keep that in mind in in a warmer uh, warmer climate it will drop a little bit of power uh, compared to this now the real important question is how do we do uh, you know compared to an is is 38 so we have here in in quite similar temperatures so there's only 14 degree fahrenheit difference in temperature between these two runs uh, the, the IS38, which is which is the faint line here, and and the new Pmax Turbo, which is the um, uh, the darker line. So you can see that that this turbo actually outperforms the IS38 across the entire uh, power band. There is a slight little edge here that the IS38 has in spool, but it's very very slight. 
uh, expect this Pmax Stage One Turbo to uh, to spool in in very similar way to what an IS38 does, which is very nice to see because you end up with a very usable power curve. And in terms of the the power difference, um, so if you watch our turbo, uh, our turbo uh, kind of in depth of this turbo. I estimated that about 40 horsepower, 40 peak horsepower is what it'll make more and it looks like it's making about 44 uh, or so peak horsepower more than the IS-38. So we're right right in the right ballpark and um, if we go and, and look at the specs that, that Garrett puts out for this turbo, so they say that it's about 485 flywheel horsepower and about 17% uh, more flow than than an IS-38 and here uh, we're seeing basically exactly that so if you're going to take um, let's take a quick calculator here and and show you what I mean so if you're going to take 320 horsepower which is what this car did with an IS-38 and then multiply it uh, by 17 for the additional flow, you end up with 374 horsepower. We're very, very close to, to what we're seeing there. And then if you were to take this number and um, and then you know estimate kind of like that dyno jet number from there. So you're looking at 14% more than what our dyno reads. So you're looking at about 426, like I mentioned, we're about 420. And then going to Garrett's number estimate of 485 uh, uh, horsepower at the flywheel. So I usually use for these cars about 15% drivetrain loss and we're about 490. So we're really in the right ballpark here uh, with the performance of the turbo uh, once dialed in. And a couple of notes about the car. So it does have uh, MPI. It is running on our pump gas. So I, I do recommend at least an HPFP, uh, but really if you can swing at MPI, it's probably gonna give you, um, is gonna give you the, the better option here uh, because it does outflow the IS-38 by a good amount. And on, on Golf R's with the IS-38, we see the on OBM stock system we see them struggle so uh, the IS-38 if you want to run some ethanol on it get an HPFP with this one if you want to do just pump gas you may be able to get away with an HPFP but if you want to push it a little bit further if you want to run some ethanol on this turbo then I do recommend that you you get that that MPI system in place and not have to worry about uh, about fueling dropping out so um, there you go there you have it uh, the the turbo works as advertised um, although these are not huge numbers uh, these are these are still respectable gains and I really like that they are done across the entire power band this is a great option if you're considering the is38 as an upgrade let's say if you have a GTI and you're considering the is38 this turbo will definitely outperform uh, the is38 and even if you have a golf R of the is30 and just want a little bit more of an edge without losing your bottom end without losing your spool then this is really a, a, a very nice option um, option to have so the turbos on our website if you guys want to check it out, we do bundle our custom tuning, our pro tune with this turbo. And uh, keep uh, keep following our channel, subscribe to this channel for uh, more information as we continue this build uh, and other builds. So take care, until next time.